Chapter 18. Flowers were plentiful that spring because of the winter's heavy rains. The dunes were covered with mats of sand flowers, which are red and have tiny eyes that are sometimes pink and sometimes white. Yucas grew tall among the rocks of the ravine. Their heads were clustered with curly globes no larger than pebbles and the color of the sun where it rises. Lupines grew where the springs ran. From the sunny cliffs and crevices where no one would think anything could grow sprang the little red and yellow fountains of the kamol bush. Birds were plentiful too. There were many hummers which can stand still in the air and look like bits of polished stone and have tongues to sip honey with. They were blue jays, which are very quarrelsome birds, and black and white peckers that pecked holes in the yucca stalks and the poles of my roof, even if even in the whale bones of the fence. Red-winged blackbirds also came flying out of the south, and flocks of crows and a bird with a yellow body and scarlet head, which I had never seen before. A pair of these birds made a nest in a stunted tree near my house. It was made from strings of the yucca bush, and had a small opening at the top and hung down like a pouch. The mother laid two speckled eggs, which she and her mate took turns sitting on. After the eggs hatched, I put shreds of abalon under the tree, and these she fed, and, and these she fed her young. The young birds were not like their mother and father, being gray and very ugly, but anyway, I took them from the nest and put them in a small cage that I made of reeds. So later in the spring, when all the birds except the crows left the island and flew off to the north, I had these two for friends. They soon grew beautiful feathers like those of their parents and began to make the same sound, which was reep, reep. But it was soft and clear and much sweeter than the cries of the gulls or the crows or the other talk of the pelicans, which sounds like the quarreling of toothless old men. Before summer came, the cage was too small for my birds, but instead of building a larger one, I cut the tips of their wings, one wing of each, so they could not fly away, and let them loose in the house. By the time their wings had grown out, they had learned to take food from my hand. They would jump down from the roof and perch on my arm and leg, making their reap reap sound. When their wings began to feather out, I cut them again. This time I let them loose in the yard, where they hopped around hunting food, perching on wrong two who now had gotten used to them. The next time they feathered out, I did not trim their wings, but they would but they never flew farther away than the ravine would and always came back and always come back at night to sleep, no matter how much they had eaten, ask for food. One, because he was larger, I called Tainor. I named him after a young man. I liked to have been killed by the Aleuts. The other was called Luari, which was a name I wished I had been called instead of Karana. During the time that I was taming the birds, I made another skirt. This one I also made of yucca fibers, softened in the water and braided into twine. I made it just like the others, with folds running lengthwise. It was open on both sides and hung to my knees. The belt I made of seal skin, which could be tied in a knot. I also made a pair of sandals from seal skin for walking over the dunes when the sun was hot, or just to be dressed up when I wore my new skirt of, of yucca twine. I often would put on the skirt and the sandals and walk along the cliff with Rontu. Sometimes I made a wreath of flowers and fastened it in my hair. After the Aleuts had killed their men at Coral Cove, all the women of our tribe had seen their hair short as a sign of mourning. She had signed mine too with, with, faggot, with a faggot, but now it had grown long again and came to my waist. I parted it and let it fall down my back, except when I wore a wreath. Then I made braids and fastened them with long whalebone pins. I also made a wreath for Rontu's neck, which she did not like. Together we would walk along the cliff, looking at the sea, and, through, and though the white man's ship did not return that spring, it was a happy time. The air smelled of flowers, and the birds sang everywhere.